Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It has been a long time, it has been too long, but I am back, ready for the Premier League season. And on today's video, I will be doing my Premier League predictions also my Manchester United predictions as well for their season as if you've watched this channel before or know me in my videos you will know that I'm a massive Manchester United fan and my season ticket is ready I cannot wait cannot wait for this Premier League season to begin I might not be saying that in a few weeks but I'm positive I'm feeling hopeful as some of my predictions might reflect the red tinted glasses are firmly on but it's time to do predictions but not only Manchester United Premier League as well because although I'm going to be focusing mainly on Manchester United for some of these predictions I'm going to do overall Premier League ones as well as I love the Premier League I watch the Premier League I will be doing fantasy football this year I do it every year but this year I'm taking it seriously I'm sick of getting second place I want to get first place in the United Stand League I also have a very very competitive family league as well and they don't take me seriously my dad and my brother they've beat me two years in a row it's time that they take me seriously so any tips on that as well get them in the comments but I'll be taking it seriously and I can't wait after watching Manchester United on Friday night to just sit on the couch all day and watch football I cannot wait nobody deserved me it's time to just watch the Premier League it's been a long time but it's back and the predictions are back and it's time to make some predictions that I probably will regret in a few months and people will probably clip me up and be like, Beth, remember when you said that? I'll probably cringe, but that is the fun of it. So it is time for my Premier League predictions and we'll get straight into it. We are going to do the top four. So for the top four, I'm going to go with, the thing, thing is, you've seen a thumbnail in this video. If, 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 if Manchester City have to do their court case this season, you know, there is a potential that they could be deducted points. There is a potential chance that they could be relegated if they are found guilty. Obviously, these are all big ifs. So that's why I said, you know what? Manchester City well, well could be bottom of the league this season. However, I don't think that's gonna happen. I unfortunately do see Manchester City winning the league again. I know there's a lot of people thinking that Arsenal are gonna win it. I just think Manchester City are too good and they're in this rhythm now. And I think it's what it's gonna take is it's gonna take Pep Guardiola leaving Manchester City for them to fall off a little bit. And even so, they're still gonna be a good team. But I think Pep Guardiola has to leave for me to fully start to take the competitive nature of the top of the table seriously. Because, you know, Arsenal, they got very close last year and is a Manchester United fan who lives in Manchester. I would rather Arsenal win the league over Manchester City, I would. But I just think Manchester City have too much power. So I'm going with them as Premier League winners if they don't have their court case on them this season and they don't get charged with potential, you know, the 115 that is over them. And in second place, I'm gonna go with Arsenal got so close last season they've got a strong squad it just makes sense so in second spot i'm going to go with us now this is where it gets very interesting because obviously i wanted to say manchester united for the league obviously i wanted to do that i would love to see 21 come to manchester united next season i would love it but i just don't think we're quite in the place yet however people will say this is even bold i've barely seen anyone predict Manchester United in the top four and I've not really seen many people predict Manchester United in third place but I'm feeling positive, De Litt, Masrui, Xerxes, hopefully Ugarte, fingers crossed coming in, Yoro, obviously you know generational centre-back, I show you about his injury, Bruno Fernandes signing a new contract, our captain, for me one of the most underrated players in the Premier League, one of the best players in the Premier League, genuinely I think he's that good. So I'm going to go, if Manchester United can get their ducks in a row, they've got new coaches in, there's a positive feel around the club. Eric Ten Hag has got more players in that can play his style of football that he wants to that he wants to play this season. I'm going Manchester United third spot. Somebody stop me. Somebody stop me. Manchester United, third place, Champions League football. To go from eighth to third, I think that's a big jump, and I think that's a good jump to make. Get back on track. And then in the following years, arguably, we can push for the for the top spots. But I'm going third this season for Manchester United. A lot of people will laugh at that. Fingers crossed, I'm not looking like an idiot come the end of the season. And then in fourth spot, it was a toss-up for me between Liverpool and Spurs. Solanke, I think, such a good signing. And Liverpool have got such a good team, first 11. But I don't know how Arnie Slot's going to do. I know they did well in pre-season. But I don't think pre-season means that much, to be honest with you. I think, I think there will be a big loss with no Klopp there. I do think there will be a big loss with no Klopp there. And they haven't signed a player up till now, if I'm not mistaken. People 
Oh, they're not going to like this. I'm going to go Spurs in fourth spot. And this kind of gives away my fifth spot. Fifth spot, Liverpool. Sixth spot, I'm going with Newcastle. Izak, if he can stay fit, I think could maybe go second in the golden boot to Haaland. I think he's a phenomenal striker. He just suffers with a lot of injuries. And I just don't quite know if Newcastle have the squad depth. But they have a good start in 11. So, you know, they could easily get higher than that, especially with Eddie Howe. But I'm going sixth with Newcastle and I'm going fifth with Liverpool. They need to make some signings, in my opinion. And I do think losing Klopp will affect them. And now we move on to the three teams that are going to be relegated. And a lot of people think the same three teams that have come up from the championship are going to go back down. I know there's a big jump, but that's not what I'm going with. I do think two of them will. Leicester and Southampton have both got them going down. And I think potentially, they have got a good manager though. I think Bournemouth could potentially be pulled into the mix. You know, they've lost Solanke, who I think is big for them. Forest with Nuno, I think Nuno's got maybe too much and they'll have to and they can keep Forest up. I think you know Alanga Hudson Dyke. No, Gibbs White. Yeah, I think Forest will stay up. But I think Bournemouth could get pulled into the mix. I think Thomas Frank's too good of a manager for Brentford to get pulled in there. Maybe if they lose Tony, but they didn't have to, I mean last season they were a bit shaky without Tony as well, weren't they? But I'm gonna go with Leicester, Southampton and Bournemouth. I think Ipswich, I think Ipswich will stay up. I have a lot of faith in Kieran McKenna. Comes with a lot of of respect and there's been a lot of people talking up his management so I'm excited to see Ipswich in the Premier League this season and that brings me on to the first manager to be sacked now a lot of people say Maresca from Chelsea and I don't think Chelsea will do very well by the way I think Maresca is a decent manager he's a disciple of Pep but he's very stubborn I know with the Leicester side that he had last season he nearly threw it away with them because of his stubbornness and he by far had the best squad in the championship Chelsea, though, I don't think they can afford to sack another manager. They've, they've given him some crazy deal. I mean, they've got Cole Palmer on like a nine-year contract. I mean, Cole Palmer's a good player, but it's cr crazy stuff happening. is happening at Chelsea. They've got about 50 squad members. I don't think they can afford to sack Maresca that quick. And I think they will give him a chance, but I don't think they'll do very well, personally. That's my opinion. But I think the first manager to be sacked will actually be the Leicester head coach. I think it will be Steve Cooper. That's just an inkling I've got personally but let's see how it plays out i never want to wish anyone to be sacked but if i had to put money on it i'd have my money on steve cooper okay sticking with the premier league we're going to do the league cup and the league cup i'm going to go with man united my team man united for the league cup i had inklings to maybe go with spurs but they they don't win trophies but if anyone could get them to maybe it could be Ange postacoglu but i'm going to go Manchester United, again, for the League Cup. And then the FA Cup, I'm going to go with Arsenal. I just have a feeling that Arsenal will win silverware this season. I think Arteta has to win silverware. Obviously, he's got Arsenal playing really well. They're competing for the Premier League, which does take a lot out of him. And they have neglected cup competitions a little bit. But him himself has spoken about the need to win silverware. And I think if they put their heads to it, they can win some silverware. The FA Cup, he's already won with Arsenal before. I think the FA Cup has Arsenal written all over it. So I'm going to go with Arsenal for the FA Cup. And then I'm just going to do dark horse team and an underachieving team. Underachievers, I'm going to go with Chelsea. They've got a lot of talent, but I just don't think Maresco will know what his best team is. And I just... I just, I don't think that football club is ran in the right way to win. Prove me wrong, but I think Chelsea will underachieve again. And then with Dark Horses, I'm going to go with Crystal Palace. Their manager got them playing football at the end of last season. I know they've lost Elise, but Elise was out qu quite a lot through injury anyway last season. They've managed to keep hold of Eze as of now. You know, their manager was doing really good stuff with them at the end of last season. It might have just been, you know, new manager bounce. But I expect a lot from this, this season. So keep your eyes out for Crystal Palace. Also, I was just editing this video and watching it back. And I wanted to add in that West Ham, for me, are also ones to watch as overachievers. I mean, the signings have made, I think, are really good. Lopetegui is a manager that comes in with a lot of pedigree. I mean, if you compare their starting 11 to, like, Man United's best starting 11... It'd be interesting to make a combined 11 out of that. So West Ham, definitely keep an eye on them as well, I'd say. And then Europa League, I've said it, Manchester United. I don't think there's any reason why Manchester United can't win the Europa League next season. I think, you know, League Cup in Eriksen Haag's first year, FA Cup in the second year, Europa League in the third year. That is improvement and it's substantial improvement. I know overall our season was a bit of a dip last season, but we managed to win the FA Cup, Europa League this season. And then once we've got our style in play in place, which hopefully will come into fruition this season, we can then start challenging for the big trophies in the next few years. But I think Europa League, with the teams that are there, Manchester United should definitely be staking a claim to win that. And I've got them down as my winners. And then Champions League, I was like this with City and Madrid. City could well do it. But I think Madrid 
with the signings they've made, obviously Mbappe, massive, and the team that they have. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Real Madrid. They're just it's football heritage. They are born winners and they find a way. So I'm going with Real Madrid again for the Champions League. Okay, so now we've done general footballing teams in the Premier League. We are now doing the individual predictions for my team, Manchester United. So starting off with signing of the season. And sign of the season for United, I think potentially could be Premier League sign of the season if Manchester United do well this season, which I expect them to do, but who knows? Well, I think he could definitely be in with a shout of it anyway. And I think he's going completely under the radar from opposition teams and also from the media as well. I think he'll be a player that in a few months' time, if he stays fit, everyone will be looking around and saying, you know what, that was really good business for, by Manchester United, that he could be in, in with a shout of one of the signings of the season. And it is delit. I am so excited about this signing. I have my fingers and toes crossed that he stays fit because that's super important. We know Manchester United's issues with injuries, especially to defenders. But De Ligt has pedigree, he's got experience, he's only 25, he knows exactly the way Eric Ten Hag wants to play. And then player of the season for Manchester United, you know how much I love our captain Bruno Fernandes, player of the season last season, and honestly could well get it again. But I'm going to go with a full season under his belt, hope and pray there's no injuries, I have to say that every time. I'm going to go with Kobe Mainu. I had the pleasure of watching it up, up close playing football on Venice Beach and he was just absolutely insane, like his close control everything and I think he could have been in with sign uh, not sign of the season he could have been in with player of the season last season if he had played the full season but obviously he was injured at the start of the season I think he's going to be crucial to Manchester United this season so I'm going with Kobe Mainu as Manchester United's player of the season for the 24-25 season that is my prediction and then breakout star for Manchester United who is going to be Manchester United's breakout star this season there's a lot of contenders a few players that did well in the preseason a lot of young players coming through but I'm going to go with Toby Collier. Eric Ten Hag seems to really like this player and you could see why in the preseason. There's rumours that he's going to be part of the first team for the upcoming season. We interviewed him and he said he wants to stay, he wants to be part of the first team and he spoke really well and he seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. I think he's going to be the breakout star this season for Manchester United. Hopefully, we'll see some young players come through. It's always good to see that in Manchester United. But as my breakout star, I'm going to go with Toby Collier. Overachiever for Manchester United, I'm going to go with Ahmad Diallo if he gets the game time. I feel like he has to. I think he's forced Eric Ten Hag's hand in the fact that he just has to play because he's been so good. So overachiever, I'm going to go with Ahmad Diallo. I think he's going to force his way into that first team this season. And then top goal scorer for Manchester United, I'm stuck between Hoyland and Bruno. Obviously, Hoyland's injured for the first few games, which isn't ideal. Mm, I think I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes. I think I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes as the top goal scorer, but it could well be Hoyland as well. Most assists, I'm also going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Captain, plays every single minute. He's super creative. I think it's obvious that he will have the most assists. So that, everyone, is my Manchester United predictions and my Premier League and general football predictions as well. I think I covered nearly everything there. Let me know if there's anything I didn't cover and I'll try and add it in the comments. But that is everything that I wrote down. Super excited for the season. Let me know all your predictions as well. People in the comments might be saying, Beth, you're crazy. They might be saying, Beth, you know what? I feel like you've got it spot on. I feel like I'm going to get the first half, but let's see. But everyone get in the comments what you guys think. I'd be really interested to know. Let's hope. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I hope Manchester United win the Premier League. Don't see that happening, but I really hope it does. But they are my predictions. Let me know what you guys think. I'm super excited for the season. More content coming, by the way. I'm going to really try and do the content on this channel, the extra content to the United Stand as well this season. So stay tuned for that. Match day vlogs, little videos like this as well will be coming your way. Let me know in the comments any other videos that you'd like me to do, any content that you'd like to see on the channel. Always open to new ideas. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel as well. Hit a like on the video. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you on the next one.